also countered what no other candidate for president will tell you. And that is, given the reality of politics and economics in America today, no candidate, no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can do it alone. What we need is a political revolution. What we need are millions of Americans, many of whom have given up on the political process, others who have never yet participated in the political process, to stand up now, fight back, and demand a government that represents all of us, not the one percent. Democracy is not a spectator sport. Watching the Green Bay Packers is a spectator sport. But democracy means, in a very deep sense, that every person here today, and every American, is extremely powerful if he or she chooses to use that power. And that's what we ought to do. Which takes me to the issue of democracy, voting rights, and your governor, Scott Walker. Now this is an issue I take personally, because I believe very strongly that democracy means one person, one vote. It means that at a time when we have, as a nation, one of the lowest voter turnout rates of any major country on earth, we have got to make it easier for people to vote, not harder. President, we will make it easier for workers to join unions, not harder. <laughs> Governor Walker wants to give tax breaks to corporations and cut education. <laughs> I want to do exactly the opposite, expand education. start paying their fair share of taxes. <laughs> Governor, Walker, Governor Walker has received significant funds from the Koch brothers. <laughs> and I want to see Citizens United overturn and their billionaire friends cannot buy politicians and buy elections. <laughs> Governor Walker wants to make it harder for women to control their own bodies. <laughs> and I'm going to make certain as president that every woman in this state, this country, has the right to control the When the Pope brothers and a handful of other billionaires are prepared to spend nine hundred million dollars in this election cycle, more money than either the Democratic or Republican Party. That is not democracy, that is oligarchy. We will not accept that.
And the second truth, reality, that we have got to deal with is we are living in a rigged economy. It is an economy in which the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. It is an economy in which the 20 wealthiest people in America own more wealth than the bottom half of America, 150 million people. It is an economy in which one family, the Walton family of Walmart, one family owns more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. It is an economy where people are working longer hours in America than in any other industrialized country on earth. Do you all know that? The Japanese, Japanese are very hard workers. We work longer hours than the Japanese. So what you got in America today is mom's working, dad's working, the kids are working, marriages are being stressed out, children are got, not getting the attention they deserve from their parents. And despite the fact that we're working so hard, 58% of all new income generated today goes to the top 1%. Are you guys ready for a radical idea? We're going to create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. We're going to expand. So this campaign is listening to women. <laughs> and receiving 79 cents on the dollar. That is why I believe we have got to go forward and pass a Medicare for all health care program. Now let me briefly tell you some of the differences that Secretary Clinton and I have. Number one, when we began this campaign, we had to make a very fundamental decision. Do we establish a super PAC and reach out to billionaires and Wall Street for funding? Well, we agreed with you. Wall Street, we don't represent the drug companies, we don't represent the fossil fuel industry, we don't want their money. Instead, we did something that is unprecedented in American history. What we did is we reached out to working families and we said, look, if you want to support a campaign that's going to stand up to the billionaire class, that's going to expand the middle class, help us out. And what happened in the last 11 months, quite unbelievably, we have received 6 million individual campaigns.
than any candidate in American history at this point. Anybody know what the average contribution is? And to quote Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg, this is a campaign of the people, by the people, and for the people. Secretary Clinton has chosen another approach. She has, she has a number of super PACs, and in the last reporting period, her major super PAC reported $25 million coming in from special interest, including $15 million from Wall Street. In addition, as some of you may know, Secretary Clinton has given speeches to Wall Street institutions for $225,000 a speech. Now, what I have said, and what I believe, if you're going to get paid $225,000 for one speech, it must be an extraordinarily brilliant speech. <laughs> It must be a speech that will enlighten all of our people, if not the entire world. It must be a speech written in Shakespearean prose. <laughs> and if that speech is so great, I think she should share it with the whole country. Yeah! Important issue which has had a very significant impact on Wisconsin and on states all over this country, and that is our disastrous trade policies. Here are just a few examples of what disastrous trade policies have meant to Wisconsin. In 2008, General Motors shut down its manufacturing plant in Janesville, destroying thousands of decent paying jobs, and they moved those jobs to Mexico where people made a fraction of the wages they made here. In 1996, Johnson Controls shut down its Groove City valve plant in Milwaukee, moved to Mexico, where they could pay workers 72 cents an hour. Last year, Johnson Controls threw another 277 workers in Milwaukee out on the street and moved to Mexico, China, and Slovakia. Fifteen years ago, Briggs and Stratton was Wisconsin's largest private employer with 11,000 manufacturing workers. Today, it has only 2,500 workers in Wisconsin after it moved plants to Mexico and China. And on and on it goes. The loss of tens of thousands of jobs just in this state, millions of jobs all across this country. Because corporate America said, we want NAFTA, we want permanent normal trade relations with China, we want to be able to shut down in America, we don't want to pay workers here a living wage, go to China, go to Mexico, bring the products back into this country. I voted against every one. Secretary Clinton supported virtually every one of these trade agreements. All of 
of you know that one of the important jobs that a president has is foreign policy. You all know that the most important foreign policy decision made in the, mod <coughs> in the modern history of America was whether or not we go to war in Iraq. In 2002, I listened to what Bush and Cheney and all these guys had to say. I didn't believe them. I voted against the war in Iraq. Then New York Senator Clinton voted for the war in Iraq. Right now, one of the crises that we face environmentally is to make certain that the water that we drink is clean. A hundred years ago, when workers had no power on the job, when they were being ruthlessly exploited, forced to work seven days of work, bad working conditions, they stood up by the millions and said, you know what, we're not animals, we're human beings, we want dignity, we're going to form trade unions. We're going to negotiate contracts with our employers and be treated with dignity. For hundreds of years, African Americans and their allies fought tenaciously to demand that in this country we end segregation, racism, and bigotry.